Recently, I've seen a lot of AEW fans on social media become nostalgic for a time when Hangman Adam Page was the man on top. Now, if anyone here knows anything about the story of Hangman Adam Page, it's me. It's no exaggeration to say that if it weren't for the story of Hangman Adam Page, this channel wouldn't exist. When the Revolution 2020 tag match happened, I kept wanting to talk about it, but I didn't want to keep bothering my two friends who were the only people I knew in real life that watched wrestling. So what did I do? I did what nobody else had done at that time, and I dissected that match to its very core and talked about what made it special. That video went on to be known as Why Kenny Omega and Hangman Page vs The Young Bucks is a Masterpiece, and the rest is history. I will be one of the very first to tell you that the story of Hangman Adam Page in his chase to become AEW World Champion is in my opinion one of the greatest wrestling stories ever told. Before there was the bloodline dominating every part of wrestling social media, there was the Hangman Saga. It was a journey where we saw Hangman fail time and time again until he finally conquered all of his demons one by one and eventually slaying the beast known as Kenny Omega to reach the very top of AEW by becoming world champion. I can talk about this all day, but I already have a 1 hour supercut on this entire saga that you should check out if you haven't already. But I'm not here to talk about the chase. I'm here to talk about Hangman's time at the top, something that I should have done a long time ago. While I understand the people who are longing for the days when Hangman was the focus of AEW during the birth of cowboy shit and the anxious millennial cowboy, I find it hard to relate to people who are longing for the 6 months where he was world champion. In this video, I'll be giving my opinion on why I think AEW failed to follow up on one of the greatest wrestling stories ever told. Enough revisionist history, this is a critical look back at the AEW world title reign of Hangman Adam Page. Hangman Page ended Kenny Omega's 11 month reign as AEW world champion at full gear 2021. For many people, Hangman was the only logical opponent to end Kenny's reign, and I agree with these people. The story itself called for it. It was a natural, logical, and satisfying conclusion to the two-year story that it took to get there. The moment was a reward for all day one AEW viewers, and the celebration in Hangman's home state of Virginia, the dynamite after full gear, was also a feel-good moment. Hangman was immediately thrown into a program with a heel Brian Danielson. For Brian Danielson to be your first challenger as world champion, you really have to prove worthy of being the top guy. Hangman tends to have a promo style that leans on realism and self-deprecation. The fact that he's so anxiety ridden and critical of himself is what won people over in the first place. And it worked to perfection in his ascension to the top. As he got closer to being world champion though, those traits started to fade away. He became more confident and started believing in himself. And he had to. If he was going to reach the top of the mountain, he had to believe in himself, even if it was just a little bit. Now that he was world champion though, Hangman was far less doubtful of himself and more of a loudmouth cowboy who was always ready for a fight. I'd say this worked, especially because it was an evolution of his character that was earned over the course of several years, rather than something that came completely out of nowhere. He stood his ground against the very cocky and then undefeated Brian Danielson. But while this was going on, another program on AEW television was just getting started as well. And it would prove to be a hindrance to the majority of Hangman's reign, by no fault of his own. Hangman entering a feud with Brian Danielson instantly made the AEW world title keep the level of prestige that Omega, Moxley, and Jericho had gotten it to. It was two of the best wrestlers in the company fighting for the top prize, and they were building anticipation for their eventual match at Winter is Coming. And while the passion from both men was there to make this feel like a big fight, it quickly became overshadowed by something else happening on the show. That something was MJF and CM Punk. With two feuds of this caliber happening at the same time, AEW fans were having the time of their lives. But every week, more and more people were left talking about what MJF and Punk did over what Danielson and Hangman did. But to their credit, when their match finally happened at Winter is Coming, the fantastic 60 minute time limit draw was all anyone was talking about. Danielson couldn't beat the Hangman, but the Hangman couldn't beat the Dragon either. Here's one of my first complaints concerning Hangman's world title run. We waited a whole month after he won the world title to see him wrestle. And while it was worth the wait, I think having him wrestle the Dynamite after he won the title, or even the week after, would have helped him immensely to keep his momentum going. To put in perspective, Kenny Omega wrestled two weeks after he won the AEW world title, 
and John Moxley wrestled on the Dynamite immediately following his world title win at Revolution 2020. The only other wrestlers who wrestled an entire month after their world title reigns were Chris Jericho, which doesn't even count because Dynamite hadn't even started yet, and MJF, which a lot of people were rightfully complaining about at the time. As I said, the wait was almost worth it because Hangman vs Danielson for the title at Winter is Coming was a classic, but you're telling me that we couldn't have at least had him in a tag team match with the Dark Order or something? It also didn't help that Hangman rarely went on last in the show. He did open the show plenty of times, which is equally as, if not more important, but his placement on the card could have been better if you ask me. After their time limit draw, Hangman and Danielson had the rematch on the first Dynamite of 2022, which was also the first Dynamite on TBS. Here's the kicker. This was once again Hangman's first match in almost a month, the last being his first match with Danielson. This gap in matches was a bit more excusable in my opinion, only because they were building anticipation for a rematch. The rematch itself was arguably better than the first bout, and it made Hangman look like an undeniable top guy when he became the first person to defeat Brian Danielson in AEW. This was the peak of the reign for me, and I hate to say that from here on out, it was mostly downhill. And I want to make it perfectly clear, this wasn't Hangman's fault. It was a mixture of booking and other feuds outshining whatever program he was in. While Brian Danielson was undoubtedly one of the most important guys on the roster, Hangman's next two matches felt like afterthoughts. First the multi-man match alongside the Dark Order to take on the Hardy family office, and next the Texas death match against Lance Archer for the AEW world title. Let's get this out of the way. This match was fantastic, but it was a very short-lived program and by this point Lance Archer had fallen so far down the pecking order in AEW that it almost felt skippable. Again, not because it was bad, it was great, but because it didn't feel important. By this point, Punk and MJF had become the primary focus of Dynamite, getting the most important time slots due to its continued success. Hangman at this point went from feeling like a guy who just beat Kenny Omega and Brian Danielson back to back, to a guy who the booker had no faith in. Thankfully, Paige was about to enter an actual feud once more, a feud against one of the most popular guys on the roster, Adam Cole. This feud should have felt more important than it was, but again, it unfortunately took place during the time that the MJF Punk feud was peaking. But in all honesty, I liked this feud compared to others. Adam Cole was another one of Tony Khan's big signings of the prior summer who was now entering a feud with Hangman. It also helped that these two had history that went all the way back to their time in Ring of Honor. I'd say that the promos in this feud got Hangman back on track as far as momentum goes. While he still didn't feel like the top guy, he was starting to fire back up in this feud with Cole. And it helped that the crowd loved both of these guys, of course. The feud was built up nicely, and yet it was far from the most anticipated match at Revolution 2022. Despite that, Hangman and Cole main evented the pay-per-view and put on a stellar match that saw Hangman once again defeat another big signing from Summer 2021. I like that this feud continued past Revolution as it added stakes to the second match. I actually had some doubts that Hangman would retain in the second match with Cole, which was a good thing because it was the first time in Hangman's reign where it felt like he could lose. In between the Cole matches though, Hangman had a random world title defense against Dante Martin, which is inoffensive at worst, but definitely a match that felt more like a TNT title defense. Nonetheless, Cole and Hangman had a Texas Deathmatch, the second of Hangman's reign, and they knocked it out of the park. Despite some good false finishes, Hangman retained and finished his program with Cole right here. This was a good feud, but I can't help but feel that it would be even bigger now, in 2023, due to the character development of Adam Cole since then. Anyway, now that Punk had won his feud with MJF, he made it clear that he was going after the AEW world title. And that's exactly what happened once Hangman finished up with Adam Cole. Punk and Hangman feuding is one of the most butterfly effect feuds in all of wrestling. The amount of damage that happened because of this feud may never be repaired, but one can hope that it will be one day. This was only Hangman's third feud of his title reign at 6 months in now. Now he felt like a part of the main event, due to the involvement of CM Punk who had been the focus of the show for the past few months. The promos became real, the heat became real. Hangman had one last match against Konosuke Takeshita before finally defending against CM Punk at Double or Nothing 2022. The AEW fanbase has never recovered since this match. Hangman, the guy chosen by AEW fans, and CM Punk, the guy who AEW fans wanted since day one, forever changed this company's landscape. At 6 months, CM Punk ended the reign of Hangman Page, and for me, it was the right time, even now knowing everything that happened afterwards. Why do I believe that? Because in my opinion, Tony Khan never saw Hangman as the centerpiece of his show after he won the world title. Sure, the matches were great, and for the most part, so were the promos. 
but just look at his placement on the card compared to other main eventers at the time. Even MJF and Wardlow felt like bigger deals than Hangman at one point during his reign, which in the case of Wardlow is insane in hindsight. Tony let the elite tell their story for the first two years of AEW, but once the story was complete, he didn't know what to do. Hangman felt like the right world champion at the right time on the wrong show. When I say I didn't enjoy his reign, I mean I didn't enjoy how he clearly wasn't the main character of the promotion anymore. His journey ended at full gear, and what we saw afterwards was almost like a non-canon epilogue. Maybe things would have gone differently if his first feud was with Jon Moxley, but Mox had far more important things going on at the time. 2022 should have been a triumphant year for Hangman, but it ended up being one of his more forgettable ones, story-wise. Sure, the matches were great as I said, but he was never given a premiere story on the level of MJF Punk or now MJF Cole. He got his story before he became champion, but he really needed another one during his reign, and that's where his reign failed for me. Again, I stand by my statement that this wasn't due to Hangman himself, but rather external forces outside of his control. He'll get another shot to be at the top, and for some reason that I can't even explain. I feel that his second reign will go much better than the first. In conclusion, the story of Hangman's chase to find himself and become world champion is one of the greatest wrestling stories ever told. But the follow-up was underwhelming and disappointing as a fan of the cowboy. What the next reign of Hangman needs is a feud with emotional depth. And don't tell me that Hangman can't tell those kinds of stories because that's exactly what he did for two years before he became world champion. 2023 has been a much better year for the Hangman, and with him signing a new long-term deal with AEW, there's no doubt in my mind that he will one day be world champion again. I was not a fan of his world title reign, but that doesn't mean that I'm not a fan of Hangman. There will be a time when Hangman and AEW themselves will get to redeem themselves. Hangman Adam Page will return.